I think there are some pretty big differences of opinion here, um, just in terms of what we call infrastructure, but also how we pay for any infrastructure spending. I, that, that's that been a huge issue. I, I don't think there are too many people who will argue that at least some infrastructure projects need to be undertaken, that the government should be doing these things. But there is a question of how we pay for it, or even if, if we pay for it. And Stephanie, I think you're of the opinion that this isn't necessarily a debate we even need to be having, at least how we pay for something, right? Well, I mean, clearly, I think it's it's clear that Congress, if they have the votes, they can move a piece of legislation, they can pass a bill without so-called pay force, without offsetting that spending. We got $2.2 trillion in March of last year. We got $900 billion in December. And we got $1.9 trillion just last month. All of those spending packages were passed without the so-called pay force. And so to the extent that there is this low-hanging fruit available to us in the economy, and what I mean is there's enough slack, the economy is depressed enough to accommodate that spending without creating an inflation problem. And if you've got low-hanging fruit available to you, why not use it? You can safely commit to spending more into the economy on infrastructure, the Build Back Better agenda, before you need to think about offsetting that spending to reduce the risk of inflation. So it really does come down to how much capacity do you think we are still going to have available to us by the time, let's say, the fall rolls around when Congress might be passing a piece of legislation like this? Andy, do you agree with that? Uh, no. I, look, the spending we've done over the past year was to fight a pandemic. It's like what we spent during World War II. You have an emergency, the government needs to spend. That isn't a justification for continuing to spend once the economy has recovered, when we're coming out of uh, out of the pandemic. We've, we've now got so much pent up demand. I mean, everybody wants to get out and do something. I've gotten vaccinated. I can't wait to travel. I want to go out and and uh, and spend some money, go to some restaurants, enjoy myself. And you've, we've got supply chain problems, which uh, are resulting from the pandemic as well. So you really we don't have supply chains that are going to be able to satisfy the demand that's out there. And inflation is really uh, a factor of supply and demand. If you've got incredible demand, but the supply can't be met, prices are going to go up. And that's what's going to happen. This continued spending doesn't help the economy. It's not going to help us going forward. It may be a, a short end to, to, to quote an overused phrase. We may have a sugar high out of this. You, you, you're going to get improvement. We're coming out of the pandemic. Things are going to get better. But we don't need to continue to use the pandemic as a uh, as an excuse for this excessive government spending that we are going to have to deal with at some point. And that as Larry Summers and Phil Graham agree, and when they agree, I think you have to pay attention, the risks of really igniting inflation are significant. Hey, Stephanie, I'd come back to that. You know, just this idea that we never have to pay for anything at the federal government level, it, it, it does... It, kind of feel like common sense to think that eventually this will catch up with us if we keep spending at a tear like this. Yeah, but the, so the point isn't that you never have to offset spending. The point is that at some point you begin to run out of that low hanging fruit. And that's when pay force become really important. And I will say, let me say this about Larry Summers and what his past positions have been on infrastructure spending. In 2014, Larry wrote an article that appeared in the Financial Times. It was called why infrastructure is a free lunch. And remember, this is a time when, when Larry made this argument. What he was saying is, when we invest in infrastructure, it is capacity building, right? So that gets around this concern that we just heard about supply constraints. You invest in your infrastructure, and it is productivity enhancing supply and capacity building. So you're actually creating more space into which to, to grow that spending, right, safely, so you don't get an inflation problem. And by the way, at the time uh, Larry published that piece, the 10-year Treasury was 2.35%. So, you know, what the point is, you do eventually have to offset spending. But what I'm suggesting is that these investments that we're talking about making in the economy build capacity. They make it safe to spend more as that spending is being undertaken. And we're, we're addressing, finally, decades of neglect, not just in roads and bridges, but we're getting into the modern era with broadband and solar panels and electric charging. We're moving this economy forward into the 21st century. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.